Let's bring in Adrienne Yong, who's a law lecturer and researcher at the City Law School's Institute for the Study of European Laws. Thank you very much for being with us. There are lots of options, it seems, but maybe I'm wrong, but from where I'm standing, there seems to be very little progress at all from this latest summit. Would you agree with that? Yes, I mean, I think that's the problem that we're having here at the moment is that um, the EU would like there to be a bit more prog progress made and indeed in any stakeholders like EU citizens in the UK and indeed British citizens in the EU are also waiting on the edge of their seats. But the more and more time passes, it just seems that there's quite a lot of uncertainty and, and there's nothing really happening and it's quite concerning really for everybody involved. And Adrienne, to focus on your aspect, European law, it's becoming a more and more like a minefield situation, isn't it? Nobody seems to know where they're going to stand. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think it's a, it's a very interesting time for all of us studying EU law and, and, and indeed researching it like myself. But um, we don't really know where to go. We don't know where to begin. We don't know where it's going to end. And um, nothing in the, in the polit political sphere is really helping with that. I'm presuming I won't get deported if uh, uh, Brexit Day comes and I haven't got a French passport because I pay my taxes here, so surely they'll want to keep me as a good citizen. But there are many questions being asked about what people's status will be. And, of course, assurances have been given, but these assurances, for the moment, don't really add up to much, do they? No, there, there has always been from the beginning um, assurances, at least from, from the Conservative Party and leadership, that they were always going to keep EU citizens and make sure that there were, there were um, arrangements in place in order to, to you know, see the concerns that anybody would have, given that it causes, you know, not having a, a house or somewhere to live is going to be a big deal once Brexit Day occurs. Uh, but it's it's it doesn't seem to be really getting anywhere or they're not really saying anything. And um, they keep promise empty, well, empty promises effectively. So what I'm hoping is that overall human rights law and international law will override any kind of problems that might happen on the day. Um, am I right to think that or could I find I'd have a big problem, do you think, come March 29th if there's no deal? Well, I'm looking into this at the moment. I have to say the prospects are not ideal. I know that's not exactly what um, many listeners out there might want to hear. We want but, to hear what you think. Um, the UK has committed at least to remaining. Sorry? We want to hear what you think because you're researching it. Go ahead, please. Well, well, I, well, I think that it's it's um it's a troublesome situation. So I've been looking into it, and uh, uh, whilst the UK has actually committed to the European Convention on Human Rights, which is separate from EU law and is something that will remain hopefully and protect uh, individuals on Brexit Day, um, the mechanisms and the enforcement of that, that system is not as effective and not as strong as the EU. So um, whilst it is a um, let's say a, like a backstop, if we're going to use that word, which has been banded about quite a lot nowadays. Um, if that's if that's the only option, it's 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 there, and it's certainly um, a possibility. But the the road towards that kind of protection and um, guaranteeing any rights is not as not as uh, clear cut or as certain as EU law. So you know, we we are going to feel that loss, I believe. Adrienne, we will speak again. Thank you very much indeed for giving us that analysis. Uh, we appreciate from your perspective things uh, still don't have any positive answers yet, but uh, you're across all the developments and the many twists and turns that clearly lie ahead. And I know you'll chart them and share that with us when we invite you back. Adrienne Young there, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Law lecturer and uh, researcher at the Institute for Study of European Laws at the uh, City Law School.